Welcome, my dear friends. Myself, Professor Dr. Rajendra Raghuvir Deshpande, would like to welcome you all in my Ayurveda Academy YouTube channel. As you know, I am MD in Ayurvedic Medicine, that is Kaya Chikitsa, and MD in Ayurvedic Physiology, that is Kriya Sharir. For paid online consultation, my WhatsApp number is given in the description 9226810630. This is the series which is called as Ayurveda in GP or Ayurveda in General Medical Practice. And today we are going to discuss very important uh, complaint of the patient that is edema. Edema having the two types of the spellings O E D E M A or E D E M A. So both are the same. Nothing to be worried about. In Ayurveda, it is called as a shoth. Shoth is a specific terminology of Ayurveda. Ayurvedic background, Ayurvedic perspective. If you want to understand, then the main culprit, main problem in the doshas, either it may be vata dosha prakop. That is also Dhatu Kshejanya Vata Prakop, especially hypoproteinemia. That can be considered as a Dhatu Kshejanya Vata Prakop. So, because of the Vata Prakop, there may be edema or there may be Kapha Dosha Prakop. So, there are two types of edema. One is called as a pitting edema and which is called as a non pitting edema. Details we are going to see afterwards. But basically here, you must understand there may be problem with the kapha dosha, that is a stagnation or the arm. Arm is a undigested product. It's like a toxin. So it is called as arm in Ayurveda, which can be endogenous or which can be exogenous. Okay. So especially when we talk about endogenous arm, which is causing the blockages of different micro and macro channels, that is called as a Sroto Rodh in Ayurveda, obstruction to the channels. So three important diseases with this respect, I must tell you that one can be the cardiac cause. Cardiac cause is basically CCF, heart problem, congestive cardiac failure. Either it may be right ventricular failure or it may be left ventricular failure. Origin may be the hypertension. So everybody should take care of the blood pressure. It should not be high. Hypertension can cause left ventricular hypertrophy, then right ventricular hypertrophy, then CCF, and then the edema. That particular cardiac edema, heart problem edema, is usually on the legs, especially the feet. And that is called as a pedal edema. Remember this word, pedal edema. Now we come a little bit up. And if there is an edema on the middle part of the body, especially after you are the patient coming with the alcoholism or alcoholic patient having the liver problem, then it is going to the infective hepatitis, like for example, B virus, then it may be a cirrhosis of the liver, it may be the fatty liver, and then afterwards it can be, comes like a ascites or udaravyadi, or our stroto rodhajanya vata prakop, according to Ayurveda, because there is arm stagnation. Then if we go upwards, and if you get a periorbital swelling, periorbital swelling in the morning around the eyes, then that is typical indication of kidney problem. So, renal edema. So, there are three important edema right now I have mentioned. One is a cardiac edema, that is a pedal edema. Then second is a hepatic edema because of the liver cirrhosis, middle part of the body. And then, then renal edema or the kidney problem around the eyes, especially in the morning. Okay. So, now let us start to discuss. There, again, if you consider, for example, the dhatu, Ayurvedic dhatu are attacked by the vata dosha or the kapha dosha. Those dhatus that are being considered over here are basically rasa dhatu because it's a problem of water retention. And Ayurveda says rasa dhatu is a dravanusari. That means it is having the fluid in nature. So there must be sama rasa dhatu, number one. And there may be sama rakta dhatu as well because rakta dhatu also contains a lot of what you can say the fluid that is a plasma. Okay. So let us start to discuss the causes, investigations and the what you can say the uh, treatment part of it. So first we will discuss about the edema. My dear friends, uh, the edema is of venous origin that is the blood vessels that is a pitting edema. Number one, ingestion of the excessive salt. For your convenience as usual, I would like to mark the topic which Dr. Deshpande is discussing. So focus can be over there. So ingestion of the excessive salt. So naturally what the basic patya patya do's and don'ts, those who are having the edema of any type, 
please please reduce the what a salt con content in your meal in your lunch in your dinner in your food there should not be too much salt or rather minimum salt you should take because salt is a hygroscopic so salt restriction is mandatory and it is not only our table salt but whatever you eat outside like for example time pass wafers kurkure murmure i will not take the uh, any brand name but you can understand what i am talking about so all these pickles all these wafers they contain the salt even preservatives the uh, what you can say the preserved food that also contains a lot of salt so you should avoid it when you have the edema problem then there are the steroids steroid is a side effect for example the most commonly used steroid in our general practice is vysolon or the prednisolon actually you know that vysolon is a brand name and prednisolon is a generic name so 10 mg tablet is available it is given mainly for the rheumatoid arthritis severe pain it may be given for the kidney problem like a, a glomerulonephritis or the nephrotic syndrome there it may it may be given for the psoriatic problem so basically it's like a magic pill it gives the instant results but afterwards if the patient takes the medicine of its own then that can cumulative toxicity will be there after consuming for 3 months 6 months of steroid definitely will suffer from cushing the syndrome that means there will be moon shaped face and there will be swelling on the face and lot of complications of steroids are there like ulcers will be there like the hypertension diabetes mellitus osteoporosis this and that so be careful about steroids consumption without the prescription of doctor then premenstrual yes again water retention is there before starting the menses on the 20th day there may be pre uh, four or five days before the lady will get the her garments little bit tight to the body and she will understand even the ring that will be more tightened because of the edema on the fingers then cardiac edema just now i have discussed ccf and just you cardiac failure renal edema then the portal obstruction that is a liver ascites obstruction of the inferior vena cava anemia and hypoproteinemia dhatu kshejanya vata prakop so you must take the hematinics and we will see what investigations we can do beri beri is one of the disease uh, deficiency of vitamin uh, then epidemic dropsy pregnancy may be there then miscellaneous old age for example dermatomyositis renards phenomena and disseminated lupus these are all related with the pitting edema now lymph lymphoedema that is solid non pitting edema due to the lymphatic drainage obstruction so blood one one is vascular another is a lymphatic obstruction but again ayurveda sroto rodh congenital problem like edema of the congenital arterio venous aneurysm congenital neurofibromatosis these are some rare diseases so uh, you students only can remember but the common man or the patient they can neglect all these problems parasitic filarial infection yes this is very common filariasis or elephantiasis the your a legs are like the elephant very very huge swelling is over there okay then chronic inflammatory repeated attacks of the erysipelas post traumatic following the fracture of the soft tissue okay uh, injury post thrombophlebitic that is a neoplastic blockage of lymphatics by malignant is a cancer tissues like cancer of the breast then lymphoadenoma or erythrocytosis uh, frigid in the young woman with the stout build whose legs are abnormally fat idiopathic without any reason idiopathic means without any reason spontaneous more common in the females spontaneous puffiness in the ankle or the foot nothing to be worried about ha huh? unilateral in majority gradually extending up the leg over months or years edema pitting at first later becomes non pitting edema now we will go for the investigation in the cases of edema shoth in ayurveda marathi madhe ami su jali asa mantu kutlya bhagal ali hai where it is uh, edema on which part unilateral bilateral etc etc ecg electrocardiogram to rule out the cardiac pathology like ccf right ventricular failure or left ventricular my dear friends here i have to tell you one thing ayurveda academy has mobile app it is available on the google play store with the same name ayurveda academy that is a free download there are 10 to 12 very interesting programs with nominal charges there is one uh, video or other one program 
ECG reading or ECG interpretation. Professor Deshpande has given so simple tricks to read the ECG. Everybody will be able to read the ECG if you download the app Ayurveda Academy free of cost and then purchase this nominal 200. Like you pay for the webinars, 3,000, 5,000 of learning ECG. My dear friends, take it from me. I, I am making the knowledge very, very optimal prices so that everybody, YouTube knowledge is a free of cost. Of course, you know that. Then LFT, that is liver function test to rule out the liver pathology. Then urine examination, especially protein or albumin. Then the renal function test, for example, blood test, urea and creatinine to check whether your kidney is normal or not. Hemogram, hemoglobin, red blood cell, white blood cell to check the anemia. Normal hemoglobin should be 12 to 14 gram per cent. RBC count, 4.5 to 5.5 millions per cubic mm. Okay. Allergy, then eosinophil. This is a type of the white blood cell. There are five types of cells. Neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, lymphocyte, monocyte. When there is eosinophil count, should be 5% normal. In 100 cells, only 5. But if it is more, that can be because of eosinophilia. Urine pregnancy test. Then treatment, rule out the cause and treat the specific cause. Edema due to the nutritional anemia. We have the separate chapter. I have already uploaded the video of anemia. So kindly refer that particular video of anemia. Now we will discuss about the hypoproteinemia. What to do? Pushmand Park in Ayurveda. That is a white gourd. It jam. Uh, Park. Two teaspoons, two times in a day. It's a very nourishing. Best for Dhatu Kshayajanyavata Prakop. Chavana Prash, as everybody knows from Amala. Two teaspoon, two times in a day. Ashwagandha Rishth, Ithania Somnifera, four teaspoon with equal amount of water, two times in a day. Then Alpi Tona from Dhandu Company, four teaspoon, three times in a day. It will increase your appetite. Regimen, regular, high calorie food, plenty of milk. Then eggs, soya bean, nasrani, wheat, ragi. Nasrani means ragi. All these things you can consume, especially in the form of porridge. Nasrani porridge. Nasrani is a sattva in Marathi. Let us talk about venous insufficiency. Here, here, let us mark it. Mark it. Yes. Arogya Vardhini, best liver tonic. Best liver tonic. It contains the kutki 50%. Pikrora has a kuru. This is more scientific information. Two tablets three times in a day. Chandra Prabha tablet, best acting on genito urinary system. Best for diabetes. Two tablets three times in a day. Punarnava, so Punarnava. Oh. More heavier diffuser, best diuretic in anime, uh, in Ayurveda. Sir, why best? We have the Lasix, we have the Aldactone, so many things, diuretics are available. In modern diuretics, there is a problem of electrolyte imbalance, especially the sodium. There may be sodium deficiency, but after giving Punarnavaso, your urine output will increase, your stagnated fluid will remove out, but there will not be electrolyte imbalance, that is the Complementary gift from Punar Navaso or Ayurveda. Punar Navaso, 4 teaspoon with equal amount of water, 2 times in a day. Mahamanjishthadi Gadha, blood purifier. Sroto Rodh will cure off 4 teaspoon, 2 times in a day after meals with equal amount of water. Every time, mostly, mostly, Aswa Arishta dose is 4 teaspoon with equal amount of water. Simple to remember. Okay. Apply elastic crepe bandage to the feet during the daytime and support the feet with pillows underneath to keep them high, especially during the night. That is called as a leg up position so that there will not be stagnation at your feet and your edema will gradually reduce because impure blood by inferior vena cava will reach the heart very properly. Okay. In case of emergency, refer to the patient, to specialist as maybe sometime vein grafting operation can help in varicosity. Now, obesity, there is a separate video regarding obesity. So, nothing, no discussion over here. Drug side effects. For example, a, some drugs, they have the side effect like edema. So, here you can give the amapachak, saubhagya shunti pak, one teaspoon, three times in a day with warm water, laghu malini vasant, two tablets, three times in a day, punar navak vath, four teaspoon with equal amount of water, two times after meal, and consult a physician, whoever have prescribed that allopathy or Ayurved medicine, stop that medicine or change that particular medicine. Then we will talk about premenstrual period, before menses, females, 
then chandra prabha vati two tablet three times in a day gokshur adi guggulu gokshur is a diuretic also rasayan also best for genital urinary system guggulu is a scraping removing the sroto rod two tablets three times in a day punar navaso two effects one is diuretic and second is a it regenerate the damaged cells okay so punar navaso four teaspoon with equal amount of water start the medicines one week before expected date of the menstrual cycle that is very essential okay not after getting the edema before it's a prevention is better than cure stay away from salt no salt please no curd sir what is that curd why what is the problem it's a fermented products and ayurveda says all the, many of the south i am not saying south indian dishes are bad masala dosa is good tappa is good huh? then this curd is okay uh, so, uh, anything but but especially the people having edema there is already a lot of fluid accumulation and the fermented products they create a lot of lot of secretions in the body that is the problem are you getting my point so these fermented products in ayurveda the word is abhishandhi please write down abhishandhi fermented products and that is clogging the sroto rod and edema will not be get cured so be careful about this fermented products of course also the viruddha ahar should not be taken incompatible food like mixing the milk and the fruits is also not allowed then idiopathy if there is no specific cause that you can find then again give the boost to the liver arogya vardhini the best liver tonic why why is the liver is so important because this is the mess main factory or the industry in our body it is controlling protein metabolism carbohydrate fat metabolism okay so we must take care of the liver mainly chandra prabha tablets two tablets three times in a day okshuradi gugulu okshura tribulus terrestris two tablet three times in a day punarnavadi gugulu one tablet three times in a day punarnavaso four teaspoon with equal amount of water two times after meals allergy use the same treatment mentioned in the edema due to drug side effects thyroid deficiency we have the separate videos on hyper and hypothyroidism basically my dear friends hypothyroidism mixed edema is related with the edema and not the hypo uh, sorry hyperthyroidism hypo hypothyroidism less t3 and t4 remember t3 and t4 are the hormones of thyroid gland if you check the blood the t3 t4 level will be down that is hypothyroidism you must check my different videos on hypothyroidism i am very much thankful for your nice cooperation and request please don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel and press the bell button icon to get the notification i am very much thankful for your love cooperation and support take care see you in the next video thank you